Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. My name is Harmon and today is actually one of the more sadder cases that I read about. Anytime a case is about uh, one family member killing another, especially a child, it really is infuriating and heart-wrenching. And so I just felt like I had to share this one with you guys. July 2009, Omaha, Nebraska, 12-year-old Michael Bielitz lived here with his mother, 48-year-old Angela Manns, and they lived in a house just up the street, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But what happened, it's gonna break your heart. It broke mine. Angela killed Michael in their home and put his body in the bathtub and covered it with apparently some kitty litter to hide the odor. But before he was killed, there was some, some things that should have been checked on. Before 12-year-old Michael Bielitz was killed by his mother, Angela Manns, Angela, she tried to get a hold of Health and Human Services caseworker that was, I think, working with the family, or she was trying to get them to work with her and the family. But she told them, and I quote, it feels like I'm spiraling downward, so I'm concerned for him and me. I don't know about you guys, but doesn't that sound a little concerning? Like, she sounds like she's crying out for help, right? Well, after Michael was killed, the caseworker that was in charge stated that they didn't pursue anything because at that point, Michael had never really been abused before and because they, they hadn't had any other problems um, with Angela. And so they supposedly just kind of let, let it go and didn't do a welfare check on them, didn't send anyone, like a police officer or anyone to the house to make sure that she or Michael were okay. And so basically because of that, 12-year-old Michael Bielitz, a young kid who had so much more potential and had so much to offer to this world, was killed um, by his mother. After everything came out, again, this was about 10 or 11 years ago, so after this all came out, the Department of Health and Human Services or whatever changed their policy and, and now if there's a call like that and it sounds concerning, they will send the caseworker and police officer there to the house to make sure everything's fine. I wish that would have happened prior because Michael would have been saved. And unfortunately, it usually takes a tragic event for, for people to change laws. And I know that's crazy, but it's usually pretty true. So again, this was July 2009. School had just wrapped up. Michael had just completed the sixth grade here at uh, Mini Lusa Elementary School. He went to elementary school here. His house, his house is only about a block up and I'll show you his house. So it sounds like he was able to basically walk to school because it was so close. Yeah, so, so their house is literally right up here on the left. So Angela Manns, she had uh, apparently an older daughter named Carrie and uh, Carrie was a uh, like a foster where she would foster kids at her house. She reported that on numerous occasions uh, she would hang out with 12 year old Michael because he was basically her half brother. She said that he was an amazing kid. She said that he might have had ADHD and she also said that Angela apparently drank quite a bit. Not that saying that any of those things would condone you know killing your own kid. I mean that's just there's no no justification for that at all. But but Carrie was saying that you know that that's kind of what was going on at the home at the time. He had ADHD and she drank a lot. And uh, of course, like I mentioned, cried out for help, calling the health worker, saying, "I feel like I'm going downwards. I need you know like I need help." And they never did. Michael and his mom lived at this house across the way from me, and it's 2857 Ida Street here in Omaha. And like I mentioned, they're like literally like less than half a block away from the school where he used to go to school at. Now what's kind of ironic is next door, it looks like there's crime scene tape. I honestly can't imagine 
what uh, 12 year old Michael must have been going through in his last moments. Uh, especially because, you know, your family members, your mom, your dad, your parents, your brothers, your siblings, all those, they're people that you care about and people that you trust. And obviously Michael, he trusted his mom. And it's just sad that he put so much trust in her and she took away his life way, way too young. And I, to me, I think that's tragic. So anyway, so Angela Mann, the article said she was 48 at the time. She received a 30 to 35 year sentence. Originally, it was first degree murder, but I think they pled her down. So she got second degree murder. And so they gave her about 30 year sentence. I claim that was about 2010 when uh, she went to court and got sentenced and all that. So I think the release date for her was something like 2026. So again, that's only about six years from now, but either way, it's tragic. No matter what, she stays in prison the rest of her life or not. You know, a young, young, bright kid uh, died and he's not coming back. And to me, that's, that's just not okay. Just wanted to share this video with you. I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like it was something that needed to be shared. If you're new around here, definitely subscribe because I have lots of other infamous cases, people, and crimes. That's what this channel is known for now. Definitely stick around. Let me know, guys, if you have any suggestions on infamous places, people, or crimes that you want me to go to. That would be great. Anyway, guys, my name's Harmon, and I appreciate you all watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.